today I am finally going to make some ketchup. Um, these are the tomatoes and I've got some more in a bucket down there that I picked before frost the other week and they weren't super ripe at that time. So, but now they are very ripe and I have some bad ones that have turned their neighbors into rotten tomatoes. <laughs> so normally I would like to do my tomatoes outside and I'd use my camp chef and I would get the ketchup done in a day um, because ketchup has to cook down for quite a while to make it thick. However, it does not seem like I have a day, a complete day at home this week anymore. And if I don't get to the tomatoes today or tomorrow, um, they will all have to go to the pigs because then they will all be rotten. So I'm gonna do this in my house and I'm gonna use my electric roaster and I'm gonna make more of a slow cooker type ketchup that will take me close to probably two days because I don't have as much heat to condense the ketchup as I would out on my camp chef. So I'm gonna set the camera down and I'm gonna get this ketchup moving along. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna wash the tomatoes and core them and cut off any bad spots. And then we are just gonna blend them. So when I am doing tomatoes, this here is a spot that I'll just cut out. It's just a little black spot. I'm not going to worry too much about it. But let me find you something that I do worry about. Oh, this one. So this one was split and it's got this white stuff coming out of it, which is very clearly bacteria. And the way we home can, we don't heat our stuff enough to kill all of that bacteria and pathogens that are in there. Um, so what will happen if I can this one and I don't cut all those bad spots out? Number one, you're not gonna die. Your jar just won't stay sealed because as you're ketchup starts breaking down with the bacteria, it'll create gases that will lift your seal. In the, the store-bought ketchup, they just throw this all in there and they um, process it, but they heat theirs somehow enough to kill all the bacteria. So I'm gonna probably throw that whole tomato out. <coughs> Excuse me. Even though most of it looks okay, I don't take any chances with something that you can clearly tell has oozing white stuff coming out of it. I just throw that one all out. Not even gonna mess with it um, because I don't wanna take the chance of that bacteria being in all of my ketchup and unsealing all of my jars or half of them even.
So the only vegetables when I make ketchup are onions and tomatoes. And I'm gonna run my onions through the blender with my tomatoes. And I will put a recipe in the description. I'll either type it all out or put a link to a printable recipe for you. And I need two large onions for every gallon of um, tomato juice that I have. So alternatively, if you do not have a Vitamix blender, um, you could use a Victorio strainer, which is what we did before we had a Vitamix. And I think in my previous tomato processing videos, um, it shows us using the Victorio strainer. And the way we did that was we cooked our tomatoes and then ran them through the Victorio strainer to remove the skins and peels. And then we measured the juice and started from there. With the food mill, I would do the same thing. I would cook, I would clean and core and dice my tomatoes. And then I would cook them until they're soft and falling apart. And then I'd run them through my food mill. And then I'd measure the juice that I've gotten from running them through the food mill. And then I'd go from there with my recipe. So I know this is a 22 quart roaster and um, 22 quarts would be a little over five gallons, but I'm just gonna call it five gallons because I've got a lot of foam on the top and so I'm gonna take my recipe times five. Now that we've got our vinegar and our salt and our cinnamon mixed into the juice, we're going to let it cook. While I'm around the house, I usually turn it up to like 350, but when I have to leave, I'll turn it down to about 150. So here you see me mixing the clear gel with the water and my tomato juice has cooked down really nice and this is how we're gonna thicken it. When you are mixing your clear gel with water, you need about twice the amount of water as you have clear gel. And clear gel is a modified cornstarch and 
it is stable for canning so you can reheat it and it doesn't turn into liquid. So I've got my thickener mixed with my water and my tomato juice has boiled down quite a bit over the course of the day. And I just stirred my thickener in there and I'm gonna keep stirring until it's all incorporated. So I'm taking some onions that I dehydrated earlier this summer and I'm grinding them up to add to the ketchup in place of adding onion powder. So normally I would have added my sugar before my thickener, but it has been a long day and I forgot to add my sugar before I added my clear gel. So I'm stirring in the sugar now. The recipe that I used to can ketchup last year um, wasn't a total hit with the family. So this year I'm adjusting the recipe to taste more like store-bought ketchup. So I've turned up the roaster and brought the ketchup to a good simmer um, while I wash some jars. I let it simmer for about an hour after I added the thickener and the sugar. And it, now with the ketchup as hot as it'll get, I'm gonna start ladling it into jars. And I'm gonna scoop away from the sides since that's where the ketchup is the hottest. Normally, if I would have this in a pot on my stovetop, I would bring it to a good um, boil while I can it um, but because I have this in the roaster I'm just gonna do the best that I can so this method of canning ladling your hot product into your jars and then just turning the lid on is called open kettle canning and growing up um, my mom and grandma did a lot of canning this way and it saves a lot of time. So basically you just bring your product to a boil and then you ladle it into clean jars and then you turn the lid on and your hot product has enough heat to soften the rubber ring on your lid and then as it cools it creates a kind of vacuum that seals the lid. When you hot water bath something, you're basically doing the same thing. When you hot water bath something, you're heating your product to the point where it has to cool. When it cools down, it creates a vacuum and that, including the softening of the rubber ring, creates a seal. So now I've filled all my jars. It's time for me to clean the roaster. And you can tell that I did not scrape the ketchup off of the sides very well. And the reason for that is because it scorched a little bit as I, when I turned the heat up to get it boiling um, so that I could ladle it into the jars. And with the product being so thick, it scorched to the sides a little bit. So I was careful not to scrape that off because I didn't want any of my ketchup to have a scorched taste. So I'm just gonna scrub this up a little bit and then I'm gonna let it set and soak overnight.
Okay, <clears throat> so I finished these late last night. Um, here is a jar of clabber, clabbered milk that we want to use in today's baking. And I set this to my warm jars last night because it was not yet clabbered when I checked on it before I went to bed. So I'm like, oh, I need to get this into a warmer spot. So I set it here with my warm jars and it is now clabbered. Um, my tomato juice did not all fit into my roaster yesterday. So I ended up with three quarts of tomato, just plain tomato juice. And the rest is 12 quarts of ketchup. And you can see this quart of tomato juice did not get quite full, but it is sealed. So I will put this on the shelf and I would just put it in the front and I will use this first because it may not stay sealed as long as the others with all of this air space in there. Now, 12 quarts of ketchup. Um, my family does not all like homemade ketchup. So I adjusted the recipe a little bit this year. I personally like more of a sweet ketchup. I grew up eating homemade ketchup and that's what I prefer. I really don't like store-bought ketchup. But my family, most of them, prefer store-bought ketchup. Last year's ketchup, they didn't really like. And that is why the recipe that I share on my, here in the PDF, in the printable PDF, in the description, that is why you'll see it look a little different than the recipe I have saved on my Instagram. <clears throat> the recipe I saved on my Instagram was last year's recipe and I adjusted it a little bit this year um, to see if my family likes it better. I put a lot less sugar in so it's not as sweet and I used a little more vinegar to make it a little more tangy. <clears throat> so I'm very happy with how thick it got. And we actually used all of last year's ketchup because whenever I wanted to make barbecue sauce or I needed some ketchup and something baked, I used the home canned ketchup. So I think having the canned ketchup helped us buy only half the amount of ketchup from the store. So I'm hoping with the recipe adjusted a little bit this year that we will have to buy even less ketchup from the store. <clears throat> and now I know that ketchup is not one of those high dollar items that really, you know, blow your budget like deli meat or, you know, cheese. But if I can grow the tomatoes and it costs me pennies to grow the tomatoes and I have extra tomatoes, why not turn them into ketchup and save maybe $20, $30 this year? So that's my reasoning. It took a lot of time. Um, but normally, like I said, I would do it in a pot and be done in half the time. But yesterday I did it in the slow cooker and I was very glad I did because I had to leave the house three or four different times and my tomatoes would not have kept. If I would have waited another day or two and I knew that I wouldn't have a window of opportunity to finish my tomatoes in the next probably three, four days, if I would have waited, I would have lost even more tomatoes and the pigs would have gotten even more tomatoes. So this, I'm gonna turn the rings off this morning and take these downstairs and add them to our stash of um, canned goods for the winter.